Welcome to my channel, Scrap to Art Metalworks. Also on Facebook under Scrap to Art Metalworks. Today we're going to make this lawnmower blade snail. The nice thing about this little guy is that most of these parts that you're going to need are real easy to find. And in addition to that, you can substitute things, other other items if you'd like, and still still have a nice build when you're done. Not real big, but they're fun to make. So let's get going. So obviously you're gonna need a lawnmower blade for a lawnmower blade snail. And then I like to use a pulley or a gear. This is a pulley off something I'm not even sure where it came from. I'd like if this was a little bigger, this one might work better, but this will be okay. And then on this one, I'm gonna cut this lawnmower blade and shorten it up. Sometimes you can, if they're short enough, you can leave them the whole length. Yeah, I like to pick out what I'm gonna use for the head before I shorten the blade so that you know roughly, it's kinda nice to have the head out over the front a little bit not sticking out too far and then the body and then the back of this I'll put on for the the end of him and then I'll, I'll weld this together so it sits sits flat I'll grind off this area here where it sticks down the lawnmower blades if people find out you're doing scrap metal art they're like the number one or number two thing you're gonna get that and brake rotors so you'll have a lot of those coming in. The pulleys aren't too hard to come by. And for the head, I'm using this little clamp off a bike. It keeps the seat up. If you take a bike apart, a bike apart, that's another thing you're gonna get a lot is old bikes. I'd love to keep this green color on this, but we've got a lot of welding to do to this. So I'll probably, the first thing I'll probably do is just take the paint off so I'm not welding through that. But I'll start out, I'll get this I'll get this blade cut down, shortened up a little bit, and then we'll talk about where we're gonna put the pulley on it. So I've cut down the blade. This is the section I cut out of the center. And then I just simply set it on a flat surface so it would sit somewhat flat. And welded it back together with poor welding, which always gives your art more character. One note on these blades, cutting them, you're gonna to have to use some sort of abrasive wheel or, or torch. You're not gonna be able to cut it with a sawzall or bandsaw. This is what I use, just abrasive wheel. I like the real thin death wheels. Just make sure you wear your safety equipment. And I've notched the, flattened off the bottom of the pulley. This little set on there. Just one note, before you weld this on, I like to clean up this area here because you weld a round piece to come up and support the head. I guess it wouldn't, I guess it'd be the neck. I don't know if snails have neck, but this, this snail's gonna have a neck. So I just need to weld that on there. Another note, you wanna come through and take all the edges that are left. Usually they're gonna be pretty dull. I use lawnmower blade, but I just like to make sure a lot of times kids will pick these up and move them around and I've also run this over a, my wire brush to knock off some of the rust. He doesn't really have a home yet so I've got an art show this weekend he's going to so if people pick them up and carry them around you don't want them getting all rusty. But I'm not going to coat him or anything so he's just going to rust back up once he's in the garden or wherever he's at. So I've got the pulley welded on to give him his shell. And before I welded the pulley on, I kind of went, sorry about that, went down in and cleaned up that area there so I could weld the neck there a little bit. I found this piece of re-rod. I just trimmed a little off the end so it'd be nice and shiny to weld to. We'll use that for the, the neck. Put on about there. 
Unfortunately, I've removed all the paint from our little clamp. So I'll probably I'll weld that on first. Weld that on. Make it facing down a little bit. Like so. I like how these clamps kind of give the face character. Alright, so let's do that. So now we're getting to the fun part. So I've welded the neck and the head on. Kind of gave them a little turn to the side. It's better like that. I like doing a, a pair of antennas and then putting some eyes on here. And I, if you look at snails, actually their eyes are usually in the antennas or whatever the thing that comes off their head. But you can get away with a little bit of artistic liberties. Now you see I've I've just got some socket head cap screws here. You can use bolts or a couple pieces of rod or anything for this. I had these in my stuff and so I grabbed those. Now I like to make sure this top is rounded off so that's not you don't have something sharp sticking up. So that's that's why I like these screws because they're all they're not nobody's gonna get hurt on that. Now I like to weld these together and then put them up there like this so that you can kind of get a look at how they're going to look together before you tack them on. I'll probably do these ones straight, but you know, you might want to put a twist on them or something. So it's kind of nice to do that and then you get the look. And I, and I do like to do this before the eyes and come forward with the eyes. So let's, let's go ahead and weld that on. So this is what he looks like with his antennas on. Now for the eyes, I found these castle nuts. And they're off the 65 Ford truck that I'm working on right now. Off the, I think they're off the tie rods. I took them apart. When I found them, I thought they looked a little big, but then when I started holding them up there, they kind of it's kind of hard to hold two of them up there, but kind of gives it. Kind of a neat character, almost more of a bigger eyes. And the, the castle nuts kind of give it a neat look. I think I'm gonna go with these. But I, I'm not gonna weld them together like I did the antennas. I, I kind of want them to have a gap between them when they're done, because if, if you weld the eyes together, sometimes they, it looks like a blob instead of two eyes. So one thing I like to do is, because I'm right-handed, so I like to do the opposite side of my dominant hand first because if you weld on you weld on this side and you're trying to get them straight then you try to come over and work over the other one on your non-dominant side because I hold the welder in my right hand then it's hard to get them lined up so get this one where it looks good because that's actually kind of more difficult to tack it on get that tacked on and then come over to this side because it's much more relaxed feeling to hold it this side and then you're you can line it up and get it flat and get it square so it looks nice I'm still not convinced that these aren't a little on the big side but I, I think I'm gonna go with it should look all right sometimes if you go small on the eyes and then once it gets all rusty the eyes don't really pop out so even though I kind of feel like these might be a little on the big side I'm, I'm still gonna go with them and this is the, the funnest part is the eyes. That's, that's really where it kind of comes to life. So let's weld those on. So that don't look too bad. We'll wire brush them up a little bit. Kind of like the look. So that finishes them up, I believe. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of my art, you can visit Scrap to Art Metalworks on Facebook. And then I've got some other simpler of my builds on YouTube. Again, thanks for watching.